With that being said, let me go pee real quick. All right, go on. Have fun peeing. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to answer Reese's question in the chat. She said, uh, I'm guessing it's a sh sorry. Uh, they said, uh, Paige, is there a reason that you decided not to speak out when the info has been out for years? Are you only speaking out to save your reputation? Where was the outrage then? Um, I am going to speak um, for the drama channels, I guess. Um, and what I'm going to say is, is that when you speak to somebody, humanize them and it becomes a very difficult situation to then speak about them. Um, I know that that is the uh, paradox that Rich Lux has found himself in, is that this person has now become his friend. When somebody is your friend, it's hard to accept things, it's hard to deal things, it's hard to process things, it becomes a whole different situation. I'm going to be upset with my friends for not making the same decision that I've made? No. But at the same time, I will say is that I know that each one of these, uh, each one of these people have a conversational situation with Jeffrey at this present moment in time. So I understand why it's difficult for them. But for me, I knew that when he sent me that message, he was quite prepared for me to lie on his behalf and then for the consequences for that. And that's I when I realized that he did not give a about us i think that was us collectively I, I think that was a wonderful response you know and, and it, i think i think Paige is, is kind of you know not saying outright but she's kind of encouraging you uh the reese or whoever it was she was talking to um to kind of look at the nuance you know because yes th th there's a silver lining things aren't black and white and, and it is true you know you hear something about a friend you you want to believe him i mean that's what jeffrey was saying but in his case it's very strange because he was denouncing all this back and forth right but uh right yeah anyways i, I have... want to just like step in real quick this will be so quick but like okay anyone who is being like, hypercritical of Paige in this instance and being like you're only doing this now da 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 like she said something with her chest that she knew was going to potentially hurt her right yeah like, absolutely you guys, you guys are treating jeffrey as if like him like he doesn't have any power one fact that, like, most people who make videos talking about what Jeffrey has done, you know, like, I once made a video, I lost, I think, 150 subscribers because I said like, just the straight fact that Jeffree Star slandered James Charles. I stated that, and 250 people were like, fuck you, I'm done, you're an idiot. That's it? Just 250? Yeah. But, yeah, but here's the thing, <laughs> and I think that this is the part that people don't understand, is that when he goes over and he speaks to each of the drama channels individually, he'll feed them information that they can't tell the public. Right. So he'll say, he'll say something like, this is what happened, here's the tea, here's my truth, and you understand, you, you believe him, and then it's just kind of like, but I can't run to the internet and say this, because there are other people implicated, there are... So it, Right situation where you're staying silent on a situation that's actually bigger than you and then it's so I'm going to be honest it's somewhat selfish to do that because it means that the drama channels then become silenced so right. with the James Charles situation I can't say what I know but what I do know in that situation is all is not what it seems and there was a very valid reason for him not speaking oh, because right, of that I wasn't ready for that but nice okay because I've been told information that I can't share with the universe, I'm kind of stuck with it. So mm -hmm. I know it, he knows it, he's not speaking about it, the people implicated don't want him to speak about it, so now I'm stuck. So right. I can't report that drama, yeah. I can't tell that truth, I can't explain to you why it is that he decided to say what he wanted to say in these kind of situations. He did that to not just me, he did that to a bunch of other drama channels which left us silenced if we spoke out and went with the majority of the opinion that was put out there um then we would have just been knowingly going against some information that we already knew privately or the other option was to out information that was not ours to out it's like imagine I, I, it's not the situation but just to give you a hypothetical situation imagine outing somebody as gay it's right the worst thing that you could do Imagine being told a piece of information and then say this piece of information is that person is gay and then now you have to out that person in order to make sense of the story. Right. It's right. not good. And then we're silenced. Everybody is silenced. Yeah. That's why I kind of, I, I kind of have some kind of 
camaraderie with my other drama channel friends because I get it. I yeah. get the situation we're all in. And if anything, gotcha. I think that's based on you being like ethical, right? Because, you know, it, being ethical on YouTube has really, it's kind of a disappearing thing with everybody kind of like warping thumbnails and making like really sensational titles. And, you know, not to say that's like an inherently bad thing, but um, I think it, it, it paints you in a certain way. And not only that, but also on the current culture of the internet, the entitlement, right? Right now, people heard you say that you know something that you can't share. Right now, people are feeling... I want to know petty page what is it what is it right so yeah but it's like that is entitlement like Paige has the right to not share what she knows so that's right. what it's, not, it's not even it's not even I have the right not to share this information it's not my place yeah to share this information exactly. I, I literally cannot because if I was to share the information then I'd be the bad guy for outing something that I shouldn't be outing and telling exactly. information that I shouldn't be telling. This is something that he does. He kind of implicates people in a situation. Uh, somebody that I dislike tremendously here for the tea, um, she made a point that I actually agree with. <laughs> and she said the whole situation that happened with her in the Jacqueline Hill video, I don't want to get too much into it, but Jeffree Star mm -hmm. sent tea spill a message. And in that message, he was like, how would you feel if somebody was to end themselves over this? Basically implicating them into the whole situation that J Jacqueline Hill was going through a mental traumatic situation at that point in time and that by them making that video that she could possibly do something terrible that's scary for any yeah. any commentator that's like, if you right. think that what your words can have that serious emotional blackmail on really like well, for um, sure but he's done that to her he he's done that to myself he's done that to several people so then we're just left in this place of silence my biggest um, thing is that, like, and people who are in the chat right now are critical of you even saying anything at all. Like, again, I'm seeing a lot of critiques in the chat that are like, oh, you are only doing it now because it's popular, blah, 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 blah. My biggest thing is, why are we yelling at someone for providing us more information, showing a receipt that proves not only that Jeffrey has lied in the past week, um, but it's him, like, gaslighting and doing all this stuff. I don't understand when people are being like hypercritical with you coming forward saying what you said because you showed all the proof you came forward and you did something that was extremely hard and i think that should be validated that should be praised regardless of like when you did it just because you didn't speak up many years ago we are going to say age up now Paige did a good job now. And with that, Tamimi's been trying to talk for the past 20 years. So I'm going to give it <laughs> But can I'm I sorry, say I don't like quick? interrupting. Can I, can I just say something I, real quick before? I'm just yeah. kidding. Tamimi, go ahead. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple things. Uh, the first thing is um, to kind of piggyback on all this. And the way I'm going to say it, I don't mean it to come off as awful. But the so in this situation, I totally understand. Like if it's it's a really awkward situation when you become close with uh, a big influencer as a drama channel because you know then like you establish like a friendship a bond and now it's like okay what's off the record and what's not you know what i mean like what if this person does something terrible one day and then people expect me to talk about it but now we're friends the only way i could think of that could possibly like well at least i could see respectful in that situation is like um if let's say for example um i think you mentioned rich lux uh we'll use him as an example let's say he knows something about jeffree star right and jeffree star's done something terrible and rich lux just doesn't want to talk about it because he's friends with him i think the best thing that he or again anybody else because this is an example could do is just to be honest and say listen um over the past few years I've gotten to know this person personally and or um, I know some things about this situation that I can't speak on and, um, you know, be vague about it to where like it's not going to give any information away to the public, but just be transparent and say like, listen, there's things I can't say or there's things that um, are preventing me from speaking on this. And I understand not everybody will take that 
like, and be like I, okay to be with honest, it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think that that's something that's especially with Rich Lux that he's actively done. I actually did an interview with him for my channel, uh, speaking to him about his relationship with Jeffrey Star in depth. And in that interview that I did with him, he basically said, you know, like he's my friend, and I find it hard to speak about my friend when my friend is in controversy. The first thing I want to do is protect my friend, which right. is normal, natural human responses when it's your friend. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of understood him, but it, it just means that he's, to be honest, when it comes to Jeffrey, he's always going to be fucked unless he disassociates. I think that that's just... It, yeah. You know, when people have different levels. Very... Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say, people have different levels of like, whoa, this is too far. Like, you know, uh, obviously, I respected Paige's video because, you know, it was obvious that, that you know, understandably so. She was like, yo, Jeffrey, what the f is this, right? And, you yeah. know, the, something like that, like something like this issue may not affect Rich Lux, you know, may not affect Shane Dawson. You, you, you can't just expect everybody to turn on Jeffree Star because he's like, he's like, what's wrong with what I did? Who cares, right? You can't expect everybody to turn on that or expect him to answer for that, right? It's, it's a very odd, precarious kind of place um, to be in, mainly because if you're talking about, like, commentary or a drama channel and they they become friends with someone who is you know they normally would talk about like if i became friends with free yeah. or if i became friends with chris hansen or if i became friends with uh sexy vegan any of the people who i would make videos on like i think the immediate reaction would be like oh so you're not going to make videos about them even when they get up to stuff that like you would make videos on Yes. Like, it's like the iDubbbz, um, Anissa situation, where yeah. he's dating a girl who was doing the same things that he's made content cops on other people on for, and that's what people are, like, criticizing for the most part, because they're just like, he said all this, like, cringy shit, and you made fun of other people for saying the same stuff, so... Yeah. It's like, I I'm not sitting here saying, don't be his friend, I'm not saying, like, break up with this person, any of that. My biggest thing is that if you aren't going to keep it like a hundred across the board all the time, then mm -hmm. don't be confused at why people are critical, at why you're not keeping it one hundred across the board all the time, because that's an issue. Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah, um, I feel as if um, it, I feel like everybody has the right to abstain from speaking about something. Um, however, if it is something that you would usually speak on, it, it I get it. It definitely does cause a problem, um, but also. With the Jeffree Star situation in particular, especially when you're dealing with this person, you're speaking to them, um, they're sending you messages, they're feeding you information, all that kind of stuff. Because also you've got to remember a lot of the drama channels where we're here, we're doing this for as a business, it's a job for a lot of us. So um, a lot of people want that inside scoop. You get what I mean? For yeah. me, at one point in my head, it was, oh, well, I, I can ask Jeffrey any question now because he follows me i follow him back i can ask him if there's a situation if there's a controversy i can ask him directly and i kind of feel like everybody especially i feel like as an audience one of the main questions that happens when you are a commentary channel is did you reach out to them well did you ask their opinion what did you what did, where were your thoughts of it like you didn't ask them so how would you know so we're kind of influenced to ask these people and in the process sometimes when we're asking these people these questions you know we become a little bit friendly and you know something mm -hmm. bad happens like I don't know the dog dies or something you're like I'm really sorry to hear that man that's awful and you get this like genuine connection that happens through that and because of that then it leaves you in this weird position and honestly if I could do everything back on my YouTube channel all over again I would not speak to a single influencer outside of the drama community and I mean that deadly serious even some of the awesome friends it is that I've made. I just really wouldn't speak to anybody outside of the commentary community. And it's purely because it really just f with your head. But what I will say is, is that there is always a place that's a step too far. And if I can make excuses for a person's past, for some of the things that a person has said, for some of the misguided ways that they've treated people, etc., etc. One thing, past, present, future, no matter what it is, when it comes to exploitation of children, I'm not f***ing with that, period. Mm -hmm. That's where my line is. My line will always be there. It always has been there. It always will be there. 
that I will call you out regardless of who you are. If this was Margot Indigo, my best friend, I'd be calling her out. If it was Nick Snyder, I'd be calling you out. I'd call you out because I'm not f***ing with that. No, and that's where my line. I agree. I think um, I respect that a lot. Um, the fact that you were able to draw a line in the sand and say, this is it. And um, I can't get behind that. That's really big of you uh, for you to be able to do that, knowing how not only I'll say it powerful. Jeffree Star does have a power in this entire YouTube community. He does have a pull. Um, so for him to be that person and you to stand up to that, knowing that you had at one point, um, you know, you talked to him before and stuff. It's just it. it that's respectable. Um, another thing I want to say is that you made a good point with the idea of if you could redo YouTube all over again and not become close to bigger influencers. I think for people that are just starting to um, kind of come around, uh, definitely for me, I know that that's something I will keep in mind as, you know, I grow. I that's something you have to I think it's important to establish boundaries if you speak to somebody make sure it's definitely um like work professional and make sure that you establish a boundary a boundary like hey listen we can't just be buddies you know this is like a conflict of interest essentially and I think that's something um anybody listening right now should take in con into consideration if they ever consider making a platform that they want to speak on to think of this because you never know if you end up becoming a bigger channel and established connections you want to make sure that the, those boundaries are made so that a situation like this doesn't happen in, again in the future yeah 100 percent. i think that honestly um those kind of friendships can be detrimental to a commentary channel if you're like a normal beauty channel then do your thing but yeah. um if you're a commentary channel and it's purely based on your opinion you don't want your opinion to fluctuate based on who you're friends with and um yeah, that's even, definitely something that i've learned even beyond friends like sometimes it can feel like flattering to be followed by someone special right you're like oh damn it should i should i talk about them what are they gonna think of me right it can feel like yeah that. Um, and, and no, uh, it is easy I mean, to I one hand. shit all the time. I'll, I'll sit there and I, I have people who follow me on um, Twitter and like on Instagram. And I know they follow me. I know they're seeing what I post and they probably follow me on YouTube. I'll post something and I'll be like, oh, shit, they're going to think this of me. Should I delete it? Should I edit that out? And then re-upload? Like, what should I do? And then I'm like, I, I can't let this person have authority over me because I don't know them and I don't owe them anything like this is my opinion i'm not going to change my opinion because someone who has more power than me right. i think what helps is that i live a very low-key life like i don't put my face on youtube I don't put anything identifying of myself on youtube it's like if i go outside there's no one who's gonna notice me and i can't have an ego like no one's gonna possibly say like oh you're this person because nobody knows me and i'm small anyway yeah. like sometimes i envy that to be honest showing show, show face and, and talking <laughs> about going against unpopular opinions is to uh, can get intense uh yeah i actually almost had to do something really drastic with my channel and like wipe all like either redo or wipe all of my videos and like do something sort of like the right opinion where they have like a little cartoon character because of a job i tried to pursue a couple months ago i ended up not getting it but if I had obtained that job, I would have had to do the same thing. And I, I, yeah. Like, for me, it was just a matter of, like, I live a very frugal life. I mean, obviously, I started when I was homeless, so you Hell don't yeah, get more frugal than that. I. Like, it was one of those things where it's, like, I was so uncomfortable with the idea of anyone giving me any sort of praise or anything. Like, I'm going to make my videos so, like, not about myself any sort of way shape or form when you do that you kind of have this like freedom to say whatever you feel because in reality yeah people can get mad at you but they don't know you they don't know your face they're not going to walk up to you and say you said this and this pissed me off like yeah when you're out there on youtube okay. and you're getting that praise and people are talking to you and you're getting like free stars or like pe like blue check marks in your dms and they're saying like oh i love your content never talk about this about me 
people are going to criticize Jeffrey for in the next coming days to weeks where they're going to look back on this Chris Hansen stream and see that it's, um, you know, not well perceived at all and see that this interview was poor? Or is this like, um, like an opinion that isn't as popular? Because I know I've been tweeting it and I've been talking about it a lot, but personally, I haven't been paying too much attention to um, everybody's like big opinions. Like I kind of closed the chat and wasn't paying attention to it. And um, so I'd open it from time to time when we were when the stream was live, but I wasn't really the chat you is know. voting no. And I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't think it's gonna drag on either. I think that commentary like channels like uh you know uh, us like you know I, I think that Paige is in, on her own kind of like she's she's commentary, but she's not like I don't know, Paige, Paige you kind of like changing your direction a few times throughout the past like. I Months, huh? I double, yeah, I double. Um, I've had like this whole ass revelation over the past, I'm gonna say six months. Um, it's just been, to be honest, it's been emotional. It's been, it's been real, it's been real guys. Um, at the same time, I just kind of was like, wanted to remove the financial side of YouTube. And I don't know if you guys get this as influencers or whatever, but when YouTube becomes lucrative, you, you, became, you get this instant pressure to make sure you're making content. You've got to make four videos a week. You've got to do this, da, 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 da. you're getting burnt yeah. out. And then you're making content for the sake of making content and not making content because you can love making content. I lost the passion for commentary. So now I've just decided to make what I want, when I want. And now YouTube is not going to be my financial backbone of my home. I'm going to make money elsewhere and because i've decided to do that i've got a lot more freedom which is probably what the one thing that's given me the courage now to speak so openly about jeffrey because i'm not scared of losing anything anymore because i've got nothing to lose Fuck you i think uh, that yeah um I, now but but back uh, to that question so do do we think that uh, this uh, is going to be, be keep talked about um was the question uh, do you think it'll be talked about amongst like beauty influencers was that more directly a question or just being talked about in general just in general, I've heard um, before the interview went on, like, people were thinking that this is going to be, like, drama get into. And mm. now that, like, we're, we watched the video, we watched the live stream, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if it's, like, people are going to find this important or if they're just going to take Jeffrey's word on this. I think it has potential. I think... Sorry, I... um... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll try showing it. I think it has potential, but like the the fact of the matter is the issue is you know when it was James versus uh, Jeffrey, those are two super huge influencers, right? And right now it's just yeah. Jeffrey against what victims that don't have a platform, and the the platform they have is Chris Hansen. He doesn't really want to bat for them when it matters. So therefore, I mean, it it has potential if you know. But that's the hard part about the speaking up for victims, because then it's like, where's the receipt? Where's the hard proof? So. I don't know. It's up in the air, but I'm leaning towards like a 40% or 60% no and like 40% yes, maybe. Yeah. My biggest thing is that I know um, Angelica Oles, uh, she tweeted about this last night. Um, T Spill tweeted about this, I think, a couple days ago, and she said, Oh, I'm going to not comment on it until I you know, uh, see the interview. I know that Hansen x uh, Jeffree Star was trending. The entertainment and i know from what i saw it could just be like or picks up my trends and it's just like oh you like when they say this was bad so i'll just show you the bad tweets for the most part what i'm seeing is people have a very 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 negative reaction to what just happened right so what i'm seeing is that people know about what happened people mm -hmm. are aware that this interview was garbage people are aware that like what was said didn't cover the bases i am now getting i have like 12 unread dms now <laughs> <laughs> who are like hey i watched the interview i found this hey i watched this and now i found like i i just went snooping and i found all these have you seen them looking at them some of them i haven't seen which is alarming i thought i saw everything <laughs> like so i know angelica is probably going to talk about it i know teaspoon is probably going to talk about it i know black wolf company who's amazing and everyone should oh, i love him it. he's amazing um in and the commentary like boys are interested in this topic and I know that to be true and so I'm very much hoping that people keep this ball rolling because it's a very interesting ball to roll like it's there's so much more that wasn't brought up in this that we know of that is on Twitter that nobody's paying attention to on YouTube right. the correct thing that needs to happen is more people need to talk See, about out this. Of all those names that I you listed I would I would put my money the most on tea spill because that reaches a different kind of audience than us commentary you do right we 
I, I know that yeah. for a fact, at least my demographic is not the people that subscribe to Jeffree Star. So I think that I'm just guessing that T-Spill probably does have Jeffree Star followers, whereas someone like Black Wolf Comedy or uh, or Company or um, uh, Angelica C- C- uh, Oles might, but it's not the same effect as T-Spill. So hopefully yeah. T-Spill could do a, a good job and then maybe redirect somebody else. I think that would be a good start. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really Think- hope she does because she tweeted about it and said, I'm going to wait until interview comes out because he, it was kind of one of those, everyone felt very sick watching Paige's videos and I saw all their reactions was just like, this is blatant manipulation and it, it makes me feel disgusted. Then mm-hmm. people were still kind of hoping like, well, maybe there's an explanation. Maybe there's something he could say to make it right. And having watched it, he didn't say anything to make anything right. It just got worse. Yeah. So I'm hoping that people are going to be like hey look at this garbage fire woo <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the, the number one thing that's going to happen is that people are going to feel like this derails from the uh, David Va- uh, sorry, Davi Vanity situation and I feel like that's going to be the number one issue that people are going to come up against right now is because yeah it's all well and good focusing on Jeffree Star but there's a real predator out here on these streets honey you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of feel like that's the one issue, the the one pitfall in this story. Now, yeah. The one thing I will say, because, you know, you, you said that the easy response, and, and this is what Jeffrey has perpetuated himself, is, guys, you're focusing on the wrong target here. What what about Davi? And here's the thing. Davi has been doing these things for over a decade now, you know? Apparently, according to Chris Hansen himself, he's still actively direct messaging a 16-year-old as we speak, or not as we speak, but, you know, actively doing it. He is. Yeah, so, he is. Right. So, Multiple. I mean, it, it's possible to focus on two things at once here. And, and if a huge, yes. huge person like Jeffrey is is doing wrong, then it doesn't have to be even connected. It, it could be its own separate things. Because as we saw, that drunk video has nothing to do with Davi. It's, it's all about Jeffrey being extremely questionable and just passing it under the rug like nothing, no big deal. Yeah, um, I think it's... Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, uh, I think it's really, um, I think it's easy to say, like, oh, you know, well, Davi's the one that's really evil in this situation. Davi's the one we should be focusing on. It's easy to say, but that doesn't necessarily mean we can't talk about the details of the situation. Whoops. That doesn't mean we can't talk about, well, there's other people involved that might have an issue of their own and like you said that video that just came out with jeffrey star um and the guy that was on his bathroom floor that's an entirely separate issue and that paints an entirely different light and i don't think he is exempt from receiving criticism for that and my biggest thing i think in this situation is that whenever someone says oh why are we focusing on what i did wrong there's a bigger issue over there everyone we can have a conversation about everyone it doesn't need to be one person and with the people who are telling me this people who are like why are you focusing on jeffrey and you could be reporting dobby to like the authorities i'm sitting here and i'm like i i talk to the authorities we're doing I, both yeah 